So you just finished the nitrogen cycle on your saltwater aquarium and you're testing the water parameters and nothing. No nitrates, no phosphates, no nitrites. It appears as though there is nothing going on in that tank and maybe the cycle has crashed. Well, that is not the case. And in this video, I'm going to help explain to you several situations why your tank might have a zero nitrate, zero phosphate situation. If that's a bad situation or not and what you can do about it. It's important for you to know that any tank at any stage in its life can be presented with a zero nitrate phosphate situation. It's not always bad, but it can be an indication of what's about to happen. So a quick recap of what the nitrogen cycle is in case you don't know. Ammonia in the aquarium gets converted into nitrites and then eventually into nitrates. This lets us know that the beneficial nitrifying bacteria that we need in our aquariums to keep this process constantly rolling all the time when fish and other things are added, it lets us know that they are there and they are doing their jobs. We want nitrates in our aquarium in some concentration, though it's widely debated what that concentration is. I typically keep my tanks anywhere from 5 to about 15 ppm nitrate and anywhere from 0 0.03 up to about 0.1 to 0.15 phosphate at the most. That's just an average range. Your situation is going to be different and depend on what you have in your tank for where you should be shooting for. Oh, side note, nitrites in marine environments and in saltwater aquariums are not toxic to the animals at the concentrations in which we deal with in our tanks. It would take a person actively adding nitrites to reach hundreds if not thousands of ppm of concentration before it became a problem in our tanks. So don't worry about nitrites too much. Now, as I mentioned, we want nitrates in our tank after the nitrogen cycle. So what does it mean and why does it show up sometimes that our tanks have none? I'm gonna go over four different reasons why your nitrites might not be showing up in your tank. And the first one is due to absorption by the dry or dead or base rock that you're using in your aquarium. I was talking to Andy from Reefability about this the other day and this is what he had to say. I think it is because it's harvested from a quarry. He's talking about that dead, dry, white base rock that, that I mentioned. It was originally skeletons of reef building organisms in an ancient ocean, and the rock doesn't contain much nitrate and phosphate when harvested. Phosphate and nitrate ions are attracted to the calcium carbonate, that's the rock, because of opposing charges. So the rock is good at absorbing and binding them up. A new piece of dry rock has a lot of open surface area to bind these ions and eventually its binding capacity should be exhausted, but this takes a long time. It is very common when you set up a new tank, just like the one that I did back here, and I used all dead white base rock that had been bleach cleaned and it was not cured with beneficial bacteria. So it was absolutely sterile and this tank ran with zero nitrates for a little while before those bacterial colonies started to build up and the rocks absorbed as much as they could, and then the nitrates and phosphates started to increase. So this could be, and I think probably is, one of the most prevalent situations that we see in reef keeping today. Less and less and less people are using actual ocean-cured live rock versus using the dry dead base rock. We want to do these more elaborate aquascapes and things, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But that is one of the potential causes for you to see zeros on your nitrates and phosphates after your nitrogen cycle, especially with man-made rock that has not been already pre-cured in a dark cure or in a, another running system type of situation. That stuff can suck up nutrients for months before it becomes exhausted and it just can't suck any more nutrients up. And then you finally start to see nitrate and phosphate increase on your testing. So just be aware of that. If you're going to use start with base dead dry rock, either man-made or stuff that you buy at a store, this is a potential possibility, but it doesn't automatically mean 
that anything is wrong. The second reason is a bit of a compounding reason with the first one, and that is that algae and biological things, microbiome and bacteria, they use nitrate and phosphate to grow and proliferate themselves in the aquarium. And after the nitrogen cycle is getting towards its end, the tank goes into another phase. It's called the ugly phase. And that's really when the microbial and the bacterial activity in the tank starts to skyrocket. And we want that to happen. That's why I'm a big fan of letting a tank go through the ugly phase where it turns all brown and then comes out cleaner in the end. I think that's a necessary process. And I actually like to see that happen in my tank. More on that later. My point though is that these organisms all use up nitrates and phosphates for their biological processes. So when you compound that with the fact that the rocks are absorbing some and these organisms that are trying to grow and create bacterial films and things in your aquarium are using them up as well, it leads to a situation where your test kits are reading zero. But it doesn't mean there isn't any there. In addition to those things, another thing that you might have, especially when people start a brand new tank, is a lower bio load. Most people don't start a tank and put all kinds of stuff into that tank right off the rip. And that is a good idea to do it that way. Start low, go slow and steady, and increase your bio load over time. But with a new tank situation, you may only have a couple of fish in a 40, 50, 60 gallon aquarium, and it's just not enough input of waste materials that can be broken down into these dissolved organics that we're looking for on our test kits. So a low bio load and use by the other animals that are trying to proliferate and the rocks sucking them up just looks like there's none there. And finally, there's one more reason that you might have zeros across the board, and that is from over filtering your tank. If you take those previous things that we were just talking about, and then you stack on top of that over an extra filtration equipment, it's very easy to strip a tank of those nutrients early in the tank's life. Filter rollers are amazingly good at this. They're a great product and they have a purpose for sure. But if you have a newer tank, I would not recommend putting a filter roller on that tank because it's going to remove things from the water that are going to be getting broken down into those nitrates and phosphates that we want. So that's a piece of equipment that's better left for later in the tank's life when you have an excess of nitrates or phosphates and you need to bring them down. That's when a piece of equipment like that begins to shine. Oh, and by the way, my name's Logan. I run Reef Rookies where I help demystify saltwater aquariums and I run the most respectful reef keeping community on all of the internet. We would love to have you over on the Facebook group Reef Rookies with Logan to show off your tank and let us go through that journey with you. And I want to especially thank my channel members for allowing me to do this full time. If you want to become a channel member, you can do that by clicking the join button or the link in the description below. And something very exciting that I wanted to tell you guys about is coming up in 2026, I'm going to be hitting as many of the nationwide shows as I possibly can. I will be at Reefapalooza Dallas and Orlando. I'm going to go to Aquashella. I'll be at Aquafest here in Slidell, Louisiana, and probably a couple of other ones. Oh, and I was just invited to be a keynote speaker at a reef show in Charlotte, North Carolina next May. So that's a very exciting too. Wow. Now everything that I just said applies to both nitrates and phosphates, but there are a couple of other things that might be affecting your phosphates as well. It takes a very sensitive test kit to give you a good quality reading on a phosphate number really one of the only ones that can be pretty accurate for the at-home aquarist use is the HANA Ultra Low Range Phosphate Checker. It's pretty much one of the only ones. I like using Salifert test kits, but even with the Salifert test kits, when they're performed perfectly and everything works, it is nearly impossible to distinguish anything from zero up to about 0 0.07, 0 0.08, somewhere in that range of phosphates. It just doesn't have the resolution to give you that information. And oftentimes, 
even though I know I have phosphates in my system because my ICP test told me that I did, they don't show up on the Salifert test kit because the resolution's just not there. So it's possible that you have some, but your test kit might be lying to you. And one more thing that I would mention, it kind of goes along with over filtering, but I wouldn't necessarily call this, well, it is, it's sort of a biological filter. Using medias like Fosband, Fosguard, uh, Chemipure Blue, Chemipure Elite, things like this. A lot of the time, people see that others with successful aquariums are using these in their tank, and they think they need them in a brand new tank right off the rip. And it's just not true. Overuse of these medias like this can lead to a situation where you've stripped everything out of the water. And in that situation, it could very well be that you actually have zero on your nitrates and phosphates. And it could stall the bacterial activity in the tank and take longer for that tank to mature. So these, again, much like the filter roller, these have a place in the hobby. There's a good time to use these things right at the beginning of an aquarium's life for the first few months until the aquarium establishes a baseline is not the time that I would recommend using them. So hold off on adding that stuff until your aquarium reaches a bit of stability. And then if you have an issue that you need to address, you can use one of those medias to take care of that issue. So we've covered several different reasons for why this might be happening, but now let's talk about, is this really a bad thing or not? And it might surprise you what I have to say. So here it is, it's both good and bad, but more likely it's a sign of things to come. And sometimes the things to, that are coming, those are the bad things that we don't really want to have to take care of and we don't want in our tanks. It's extremely common early on in a brand new tank's life for that tank to run at what I would call an ultra low nutrient situation, right? Very low on nitrates and phosphates and just seemingly barely chugging along. As long as you have registrable nitrates and phosphates on your test kits, you're okay. If those numbers drop to flat zeros, that is a situation where you might want to take some initiative to do something about correcting that problem. And here's why. All of the bacteria and the microbes and the things that we want to flourish in our tank keep the bad things that we don't want sort of at bay. If you don't want dinoflagellates and you don't want cyanobacteria and things like this, you want the good stuff to really be kicking and rolling and doing well and proliferating in life. Having those nutrients in the tank is going to make sure that those good bacteria have an available food source so that they can do what they need to do to make more of themselves and continue out competing those things that we don't want. What happens when the tank drops to zero nutrients for too long is those good bacteria go dormant or even begin to die off. And that opens the door for things like dinoflagellates, cyanobacteria, diatom explosions, and all of this other stuff that makes the tank look like crap and is also a pain in the butt to fight sometimes. Ensuring that you have a good sized, good, healthy microbiome of the things we do want helps prevent all of that stuff. And the way that you make sure that you have that is by having these nutrients in the tank. And I completely forgot to mention when I was recording, how do we get these bacteria that we want into the tank in the first place? And one of the best ways to do that is by adding live rock or live sand that has been cured and came out of the ocean. There's a bunch of different places you can get it. If you start Googling where to get live sand and live rock from, you'll find some places where you can get it. Tampa Bay Saltwater Rocks. Uh, floridapets.com or a couple and even the aquabiomics website which is like the pinnacle of live sand and live rubble because they run aquabiomics testing on it to make sure that it doesn't have anything in it that you don't want but that's one of the well that's not one of that is the best place to get these types of things that you want into your aquarium very, very, very few of the beneficial things like this that we want can be found in a bottle on a shelf. The second best place to get it from is from another running aquarium that looks how you want your tank to look when you get there. So if, 
if their tank looks great, their corals are happy and healthy and they don't have any problems, see if you can get a cup or a scoop of sand or even a few small pieces of rock or some rubble out of their sump so that you can add that to your tank and you introduce that good bacteria. So when would you think about doing something about this? After the nitrogen cycle has finished, it registered nitrates for a little while. Now they're gone down to zero and the tank is entering into the ugly phase. It's beginning to turn brown and turn green and things are starting to grow. If your nutrients, specifically nitrates and phosphates, are at zero during this time, I would suggest that you go ahead and start dosing something to combat that. You want to have those nutrients there. Now, they don't have to be there in massive quantities, but for the reasons that we were talking about earlier, you don't want them at zero either. And this is a very important time in the tank's life. This blooming of this bacterial biome that you're going to ultimately have in the aquarium, this is when it's getting kicked off. It would be like getting ready to send a football team to the Super Bowl, but not feeding them before they play the big game. So that's kind of when you would want to start taking action if things are at zeros, during the ugly phase of the tank's life. Now this can also happen at any point in the tank's life, and even mature tanks sometimes work themselves into a situation where they show zero nitrate and phosphate. In that case, if the tank is looking good and nothing bad is beginning to show up, you may not have to do anything about it because the tank may just be using up most of everything that's being you know, produced by the aquarium. As long as there's a sliver of something on those test kits, I wouldn't really recommend doing a whole lot about it. But corals tend to do better when your nitrates and your phosphates are in those ranges that I was talking about earlier. So if you have a mature tank and you're seeing degradation in the color of your corals or the growth, or if they're just kind of withering up and they're not doing much, and your nutrients are at an ultra low nutrient situation, you might want to begin dosing something to bring them up. And there's a lot of different products that you can get to accomplish that goal. Some of the more common ones are Brightwell, Neo Nitro, and Neo Foss. They work very well but they get very expensive very fast, especially with big systems like this, 200, 250, 300 gallons. So there are other things you can get like potassium phosphate dibasic or sodium nitrate, pure food grade stuff that you can buy on Amazon. This is a brand that I use. This is ammonium bicarbonate, and that's a topic of a whole nother discussion, but this is a brand that I use. It's pure, 100% food-grade stuff. You can get these things on Amazon. You can find DIY recipes online. If you look up, say, like Randy Holmes Farley DIY nitrate recipe, you'll find some information out there about using these things to increase your nitrate and phosphate. And it's a really funny thing too, because you might stumble upon some information about using stuff like stump remover and driveway ice melt and things like that. And that used to be stuff that we did way back in the day, 20 years ago, and a lot of people still use that, but some of those products are being hard to find. So I would recommend finding the food grade stuff as pure as you can get it and then use that to bring these things up in your tank. But don't go doing it all just willy-nilly. Make sure you do the research, find out how much of a thing you need in how much RODI water to make the proper solution. That also is a video for another day. So here's the key takeaway from this video. Zero nitrates and phosphates after the nitrogen cycle does not mean that you have failed. It does not mean that your cycle has crashed and that your tank is in a bad state of being. It just means that the tank is either absorbing or using everything that's being produced. And one of the best things about this is one of the easiest ways to fix it is to add more life into the aquarium. The thing that we all wanna do add fish, add cleaners, especially cleaners, add invertebrates and things like this, increase the bio load and overcome the amount that the tank can use by input of organisms in your aquarium. That's what we all want anyway. So with all of that being said, if you want to dig deeper into parameter balance and how they all relate with one another, 
check out that video on the screen up there. It talks about that very thing, and I think you're going to find that pretty interesting.